Out from the Heart by James Allen Chapter 4 Doing and Knowing Let a man or woman realize that their life in its totality proceeds from their mind. Let them realize that the mind is a combination of habits which he or she can, by patient effort, modify to any extent and over which he or she can thus gain complete ascendancy, mastery, and control. At once, they will have obtained possession of the key which shall open the door to their complete emancipation. But freedom from the ills of life, which are the ills of one's mind, is a matter of steady growth from within and not a sudden acquisition from without. Hourly and daily must the mind be trained to think stainless thoughts and adapt right and dispassionate attitudes under those circumstances in which it is prone to fall into wrong and passion. Like the patient sculptor upon his marble, the aspirant to the right life must gradually work upon the crude material of his mind until he has wrought out of it the ideal of his holiest dreams. In working toward such supreme accomplishment, it is necessary to begin at the lowest and easiest steps and proceed by natural, progressive stages to the higher and more difficult. This law of growth, progress, evolution, and unfoldment by gradual and ever-ascending stages is absolute in every department of life and in every human accomplishment. Where it is ignored, total failure will result. In acquiring education, in learning a trade, or in pursuing business, this law is fully recognized and minutely obeyed by all. But in acquiring virtue, in learning truth, and in pursuing the right conduct and knowledge of life, it is unrecognized and disobeyed by nearly all. Hence, virtue, truth, and the perfect life remain unpracticed, unacquired, and unknown. It is a common error to suppose that the higher life is a matter of reading and adoption of theological or metaphysical hypotheses and that spiritual principles can be understood by this method. The higher life is higher living in thought, word, and deed, and the knowledge of those spiritual principles, which are eminent in a man or woman and in the universe, can only be acquired after long discipline in the pursuit and practice of virtue. The lesser must be thoroughly grasped and understood before the greater can be known. Practice always precedes real knowledge. The schoolmaster never attempts to teach his pupils the abstract principles of mathematics at the start. He knows that such method of teaching would be in vain and learning impossible. He first places before them a simple sum and, having explained it, leaves them to do it. When, after repeated failure and ever-renewed effort, they have succeeded in doing it correctly, a more difficult task is set before them, and then another and another. It is not until the pupils have, through many years of diligent application, mastered all the lessons of arithmetic that he attempts to unfold to them the underlying mathematical principles. In learning a trade, say that of a mechanic, a boy is not at first taught the principles of mechanics, but a simple tool is put into his hand and he is told how rightly to use it. He is then left to do it by effort and practice. As he succeeds in plying his tools correctly, more and more difficult tasks are set before him until after several years of successful practice, he is prepared to study and grasp the principles of mechanics. In a properly governed household, the child is first taught to be obedient and to conduct him or herself properly under all circumstances. The child is not even told why he or she must do this but is commanded to do it. 
only after he or she has far succeeded in doing what is right and proper is he or she told why they should do it. No parent would attempt to teach their child the principles of ethics before exacting from that child the practice of family duty and social virtue. Thus, practice ever precedes knowledge, even in the ordinary things of the world and in spiritual things, in the living of higher life, this law is rigid in its demands. Virtue can only be known by doing, and the knowledge of truth can only be arrived by perfecting oneself in the practice of virtue. To be complete in the practice and acquisition of virtue is to be complete in the knowledge of truth. Truth can only be arrived at by daily and hourly doing the lessons of virtue, beginning with the simplest and passing on to the more difficult. A child patiently and obediently learns their lesson at school by constantly practicing, ever exerting themselves until all the failures and difficulties are surmounted. Likewise does the child of truth undaunted by failure and made stronger by difficulties, apply themselves to right doing in thought and action. As they succeed in acquiring virtue, their mind unfolds itself in the knowledge of truth, and it is a knowledge in which they can securely rest. Join me on my next video as we discover the divine wisdom of the ages one sacred text at a time. I'm Carol, and I'm just thinking with the masters.